This is part 134 of ASP.NET tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss adding image slideshow to your website using ASP.NET Ajax and C Sharp. So this is what we want to achieve. Notice that I have this images folder which has got few images. We want to display one image at a time on a web form in an image control. And the image that is displayed within this image control should be changed automatically every one second. And that should happen without user having to post the page back to the server. Let's see how to achieve this. Obviously, the first step here is to create an ASP.NET Web Application project, which I have already done. So here we have a new ASP.NET Web Application project. I just named it Image Slideshow. All I have done so far is created a new ASP.NET Web Application project. Okay, and the next step is to add images folder to the project. This folder is going to store the images that we want to display within the image control. So let's go ahead and add images folder. Okay, the, for the purposes of this demo, we're going to make use of the pictures that are shipped with Microsoft operating system. And to get to those pictures, click on the start button, type pictures, and then click on this link, on this pictures link. This should take you to library pictures where you should find sample pictures folder. Double click on that. So there we go. We have all the sample pictures that are shipped with the Microsoft operating system. And if you notice, the path is this one. C colon users public pictures, sample pictures. The same as what you see here. Okay. So I'm going to copy these pictures. And then I have already pasted them into images folder which is in my C drive and then I have renamed these pictures to use you know numbers in sequence 1.jpg, 2.jpg to 8.jpg so these are the original names of the images but I have renamed them to use numbers in sequence in a bit you'll understand why we will have to rename them alright and then what I'm going to do I'm going to copy them and then paste them into the images folder so now, you know, the Solution Explorer in our project is very much similar to what we have, you know, in this image here. Okay. So the next step is to drag and drop script manager control onto the web form. You can find the script manager control under Ajax extensions within the toolbox. So we need to drag and drop this onto this web form. But first of all, let's get rid of this default content that's already there on this default.aspx web form. Okay, so at the moment when we navigate to this, you know, it displays the default content, but we don't want all this content. So let's go ahead and get rid of this content from there. And then let's drag and drop the script manager control onto the web form. Now, if you're wondering why are you be using the script manager control, this is one of the Ajax extensions control. Now, if we have to take advantage of ASP.NET Ajax, Ajax, then we need to have an instance of this control on that web form. In a later video session, we'll discuss more about the script manager control. Okay. So the next step is to actually use um, the update panel, but we'll come back to that in just a bit. Now, we're going to drag and drop a timer control and an image control. And in a bit, you'll understand you know, what we are going to do with those two controls. Now, let me first drag and drop this timer control, which you can find again under Ajax extensions. And then I'm going to drag and drop an image control because that's the control which we, which we are going to use to display the image. So there we go. We have an image control and a timer control. Now, this timer control, let's flip this web form to the design mode. And this timer control, if you get to the properties, notice that there is an interval property. Now, this interval property is basically in milliseconds. Look at the help here, the duration between tick events in milliseconds. So basically, if I set this interval property, for example, to 1000, then every, this is this interval is in milliseconds. So 1000 milliseconds is equal to one second. So every one second, this control is going to raise an event called tick event, just like how a button control has a click event. Uh, timer control has got this tick event and this event is raised whenever this duration has elapsed. So what's our requirement? We want the image that is displayed within the image control to be changed every one second. And for that to happen, we have to post the 
web form back to the server and when it gets posted back that's when we have to write the logic to change the image there so but the user shouldn't be posting the page back to the server we want that to happen automatically so this timer control is what is going to you know post the web form back to the server every one second okay and uh, since we have specified 1000 milliseconds here you know the stick event is going to be raised every 1000 milliseconds that is every one second okay so the next step is to actually generate the event handler for the tick event so here we have the tick event we can either double click on here or we can double click on this control itself since the tick event is the default event for this timer control you know an event handler will get auto generated for us okay now what we are going to do here we are going to write logic to change the image dynamically uh, you know that's being displayed within our image control so what we want to do is we want to create an instance of a random class and let's call it rand so this random class has got a function called next you know which is going to generate a random number for us now notice the image names that we have we have images from 1 to 8 now we want to display an image within the image control at random okay every one second so I'm going to tell this random object to generate a random number between 1 and 8 for us okay so the minimum I'm going to use an overloaded version you know where we can specify the minimum random number that we want to generate and the maximum random number so the minimum is going to be 1 and the maximum is going to be 8 so that's what we are going to specify here and then let's store it in a variable of type integer okay so if you look at the return type of this function it's an integer because it's a random integer okay and then what we are going to do here is obviously we have an image control and the ID of the image control is image1 so we want to set the image URL property of this image control and we are going to do that so image1 dot image URL is equal to now where are our images present they are present in this images directory which is present within the root directory of our web application project so to get to the root directory we use tilde symbol forward slash images forward slash we need to specify the name of the image so which image you want to display you know one two three now that's determined by this variable i so to this string I'm going to concatenate you know the value of i which will be either one two three four and then to that the extension of the image what is the extension of the image dot jpg so let's concatenate that okay so now if you look at this expression right here you know it's going to give the path for the image that we are going to display within the image control okay now you might have understood the reasoning behind changing the names you know to use numbers in sequence because you know we want a random number and then you know the name of the image is going to match one of these random numbers that is generated that's the reason why we'll have to use these numbers instead of these names okay all right so we have those images there and then you know basically look at this with this with all these changes if I go ahead and run this actually when the web form is first displayed you'll notice that it's not going to display any image so basically look at that you know you didn't notice that but when I refresh this page first one second notice that it didn't display anything so first of all as soon as the image is uh, web form is loaded we want an image to be displayed so first let's go ahead and fix that so obviously in the page load event you know we need to invoke this logic so what I'm going to do I'm going to extract this into its own method so I'm going to refact, refactor this extract a method um, let's call the set image URL so we want that as the function name so and we want to call this function even in the page load so if it is the first initial get request so if not is post back so let's call this uh, function so that the first time when the web form is loaded you know it immediately will display an image and then on the subsequent time this event gets raised every one second at which point it's going to load the image okay 
So let's run this. So notice that as soon as the web form loads, it will display an image there. Okay. Now the problem is here the image size is too big. We want we don't want you know this big image to be displayed. Let's say I want the image height and width to be 200 pixels. So how do we adjust that? Simply go back to your default page and then set the height and width for the image. So height is equal to 200 pixels and width is also going to be 200 pixels. So depending on your project requirement, you can adjust the height and width. And the moment we do that, look at that, the image gets um, changed every one second. But then notice that the problem here is that the screen flickers. Look at that. You can see that there is a post back. And then basically, you notice that here, you know, the entire page is posted back to the server and, and the server sends the response for the entire web form back. That's why you have a screen flicker there. So here we are actually doing a complete, a full page post back. Instead of that, let's do a partial page post back. I don't want to post, you know, the entire web form. Instead, I just want to post back, you know, this portion because every time we post the web form and come back, only this portion needs to be updated. Okay, so I just want to do a partial page post back, in which case, you know, only this piece of content will be posted to the server, the web form does its processing, and only the HTML, you know, corresponding to that region will be sent back as the response. Okay, let's say how to achieve partial page post backs. To achieve that, we can use something called update panel. So let's close all these windows. So within Ajax extensions, we have something called update panel. So let's drag and drop this update panel onto this web form. So this update panel helps us achieve partial page post back. So this control allows us to perform partial page postbacks as opposed to a full page postback. Now, the responsiveness of a page can be significantly increased using partial page postback as only the data that is relevant to the update panel is sent to the server. The server does its processing and only the corresponding data, the corresponding data, um, you know, as far as the update panel is concerned, that is sent back to the client. So as a result of this, the responsiveness of the page can be significantly increased. And another greatest benefit of partial page postback is that, you know, they avoid screen flickers, which are very common with full page postback. We have just screen, seen, you know, how the uh, page, the web form basically flickers on every postback. Let's see how we can avoid that using this update panel. Okay. So, you know, we can put this timer and image controls within that update panel, but then we can't, within update panel, we need to have something called content template. So all the content of the update panel must go inside that content template. And there is something else called, you know, triggers, which we will discuss in a later video session. So let's format this HTML by pressing control K, control D. All right, let's save all this and let's navigate to that default page. Now we should have a partial page post back and there should be no screen flickers. Look at that, you know, you don't have any screen flickers. Only this portion of the web form is updated. Now, this is happening every one second. If you want that to be changed, all you need to do is change the interval here. Now it's 1000 milliseconds, which is one second. If you want the image to be changed, maybe every um, 100 milliseconds, then you can change it to 100. But then, you know, look at the speed at which the image gets changed. You know, obviously we don't want to do something like that. Let's say I want to change the interval to two seconds. We can do that as well. So now the image here is changed every two seconds. All right. Now, at the moment, the problem with this code that we have written is that it displays a random image every one second. Now, the images are not being displayed in sequence. Okay, they are being displayed at random. Now, let's say our project requirement is such that we want to display images in order, that is from 1.jpg to two, next 2.jpg, next 3.jpg until 8.jpg. Once it reaches number 8, we again want to start from 1. So, but always it has to display the images in order. 
and also we want to display the number of the image that is being displayed so that we know the images are being displayed in order. Let's see how to fix these in our next video session. On this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.